The Uganda Freedom Party has dismissed claims that its members are planning to assassinate the EFF Secretary General, Marshal Tlamini. In a statement issued earlier today, the EFF says it received a briefing from senior police leaders about the alleged plot. The party says that Tlamini is being blamed for initiating motions of no confidence against IFP mayors in Kwasimnatal after a breakdown of a coalition agreement between the two parties. The IFP, through its spokesperson, Kulego Shengwa, has dismissed the allegations as inflammatory and dangerous. He's also said that if police genuinely knew of an assassination plot, they would have made arrests already. Well, then the EFF says that it does not take such claims lightly, given political violence and the history of political killings in Guazum Natal. The EFF is strongly opposed to the use of violence and assassinations as a method to settle political differences. We as the EFF will do everything in our power and within our capacity to protect our Secretary General against agent provocateurs and agents of apartheid who only thrive through violence or threats of violence. Let's speak now to IFP spokesperson Kulewa Shengwa joining us from KZN tonight. A very good evening to you, sir. Grateful to have you on the program. So the EFF said that it issued the statement this morning based on a police briefing. The likes of the public broadcaster through the radio station SAFM reporting that police have denied knowledge of such a briefing. What's your take now? Well, it's vindication. The delusions of grandeur of the EFF are on peak. Uh, we know it's very sad that a political party would stoop to the level of the gutter in the manner in which the EFF has. The fact that they are prepared to go out on a limb on an unsubstantiated, baseless and inflammatory um, allegation, which the IFP dismisses with the contempt that it deserves. We are not at war with the EFF. Um, we've got no reason to be at war with the EFF. The by-election results are testament of an IFP that is trouncing the EFF. We are trouncing the ANC. We are on an upward trajectory. Um, violence is not conducive for anybody. We condemn it. We don't associate with it. But the onus is now on the EFF um, to actually come clean in terms of where they got this fairy tale story, which is an absolute lie, which is something which we find to be stirring um, tensions unnecessarily. Here's the gist of the matter. The EFF was convinced that it had an influence that would derail the IFP from government throughout Guazulu Natal. On realization after divorcing us, they have realized now that they had overstated their influence and that that is not going to happen. So now they need to justify to their members why they took a decision which is bringing the ANC back into power. So the best way to do that is to tell us this kind of hogwash and this story which is baseless. That's point one. Point two, I want to reiterate that when we met with the EFF, they placed on the table that they had arrived at an agreement with the ANC that the IFP will take Mokhale City they would appoint a proxy mayor in Eguruleni, and the ANC will appoint a proxy mayor in the COJ, and that the IFP must hand over Umsla Chuse to the EFF. We rejected all of those unholy alliances they were bringing us into with the ANC. And so the backlash now is a means of um, some self-absorbing public vindication that they want to do to justify themselves. They go down to this level, stoop so low to tell a lie. So we are quite happy that the SAPS um, has, has come out very cleanly and, and told the country that um, they do not know what the EFF is talking about. No such briefing has actually taken place. And so we fundamentally believe the EFF must retract this thing and stop seeking sympathy and take responsibility for the decisions they've associated themselves with. Well, they say the EFF in their statement that they're going on a reliable intelligence, well, reliable intelligence reports, which that senior leaders of the IFP believe that Marshal Tlamini is solely responsible for the collapse of the relationship in Guazan Nadal. Could it be, are you open to the possibility that perhaps the police spokesperson interviewed today may not know of the existence of such a report or that it was given to the party through other means other than official SAPS channels? Why should we entertain then the street gossip of people as basis and fact? 
if the EFF is engaged in gossip somewhere, we, they must not involve the IFP in that. We are taking on authority, one, the fact that we knew before the SEPs even spoke today that the EFF was being delusional. And the, and the SAPS has confirmed that. The onus is on the SAPS uh, and on Minister Peggy Kele and the State Security Agency and the EFF. The burden of proof lies with he that who alleges. In this case, it's the EFF and its cohorts. But we are remaining fundamentally uh, convinced that this is baseless. Also, the EFF must not overstate its influence. They are making it as though heavens must fall for the IFP if they come out of governance with us. You know, in 2011, the IFP came out with two municipalities after the elections, Umsinga and Bulundi. We hit the ground running. By the time we arrived at 2016, we were governing 13 municipalities. So losing is not something new. We don't like it, but it's not something new. So we're not gonna now behave outside our character and want to wrestle power in a manner that is inconsistent with the law. E e EFF is really, it's delusional. This thing is crazy. It's absurd. However, KZN does have a well-documented history of political violence, including members of the ANC, members of the IFP as well, right? So now that we've seen this tension play out between the IFP and EFF so publicly, especially today, both of you are trading very strongly worded statements. Is there not a fear from your end that, in fact, the developments of the last few hours may be very well what leads to tension between your members at community level? No, there's no reason, because the IFP members are resolute on the onward march towards 2024 for the IFP to reclaim the province of Kwazulu Natal. We are not going to be sidetracked or derailed by these theatrics, which seek attention unnecessarily and unjustifiably. We continue to call on our members to focus on the mission at hand, the responsibility at hand. Where we are governing, we must roll out services. The leadership of the IFP has committed that by the end of the first quarter of this year, we will do a review of all our deployees to ensure that our the communities are receiving services. We are not threatened by the EFF. We are not fearful of the EFF because in the ring that matters most, which is the ballot box on election day, any election day we are beating them hands down um, in, the, in, in, in the elections. We are quite confident that our members are exercising maximum discipline. They will not be deterred. They will not be swayed. They are focused on the objectives that we have set out um, for, for ourselves. So as far as the IFP is concerned, we are not engaging in any violence. We are not going to be engaging in any violence because any violence at this point in time would actually derail our efforts towards uh, the victory that we are pursuing in 2024. You mentioned, Minister Peggy Kele, if this comes from the police service, is there not a conversation to be had between the IFP, the minister, and perhaps even the commissioner about such information reportedly coming from the police service? And now we've got a, a spokesperson going on radio saying, well, we're not aware of that, but it's created such a big political scandal already. Look, we are, we, gossip is not a new phenomenon in the EFF uh, circle. You will remember in last year's SONA, there was also controversy and gossip around Minister Kelly and the SAPS. It's a culture uh, which seeks to draw attention to them and make headlines. I've wasted the whole of today having to respond to this hogwash that they know is not truth. Why? Because it keeps them in the news. They've got nothing else to offer other than chaos that will receive a report as a matter of priority and urgency. But we stand by what we said. We dismiss this allegation uh, with the contempt that it deserves. And secondly, we are holding uh, firm now to what the SAPS has said because it's the clearest indication yet okay. um, that this is a wild goose chase being offered by the EFF. Nkula Wafewa, spokesperson for the Ngata Freedom Party. Good to speak to you. We will be having the EFF or trying to get the EFF onto our later programs to get their take, especially now that we've got SAPS comment given to a radio station today, the public broadcaster. Let's remind you of the top stories on News at Prime.